Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Science of Raz channel. In the previous video I showed you this uh, pick and place machine in operation uh, placing air but what it was doing was incrementing these uh, feed tape, tape strips and correctly going into the holes of the tape strips uh, mostly but a lot of that can be uh, fine-tuned but here's the uh, here's what it looks like here it's got these uh, three of these hopper hoppers on here each one of those has five lanes the, com the, the tapes with the uh, components on them are held captive in these slots of these feeders I actually bought these feeders off of eBay and uh, let me show you one of them how they come basically just like what I have them they're about $25 but I thought I'd save myself some work and just buy the thing because it was already there and I needed it and just incorporate it into my design and you can put the reels on it too but at this stage I don't need the reels on it and just uh, still fine tuning it. it and it seems to be working pretty good actually I mean, it, it missed a few of them, but I may be able to write a sub subroutine that initializes it so that all of the uh, the little holes line up. That's what happened was, if if you don't line them up correctly to start, then it'll stay off. And that brown thing there, or black thing, is weather stripping. And it's a rubber weather stripping. It had a hollow co hollow column in there. And I'll put some, uh, put a rod through there, and, and cut it out so that they set on top of the tape strips, and that stops the tape strips from bouncing up and down, which will throw all the components off. Uh, these components are very sensitive to any kind of vibration. If I were to just flick one of those tape strips, the components would go flying everywhere, even with the slightest touch. So that helps to damp out a lot of that. And then here's the uh, the layout of the printer circuit board. It did that pretty well. It, it put put those on there. Uh, well, the, the nozzle plate placement was very accurate. Was was I think good enough? And actually, that can be tuned to through the software. Here's the here's the pickup head. What you see on there now is an air hose. I'm, and that'll be the next step, is using the vacuum to pick up the uh, components and then placing the components. I'm actually having a little problem with the uh, with this pickup here right now because it's losing vacuum so it won't pick up the components uh, securely. It has this vacuum pump right here, a small vacuum pump. Which I do have some bigger ones but I'm going to try to uh, get it to work with the small one for now. And then it has this uh, the pneumatic switch here which is hooked to the spindle output of this stepper motor driver board that's the spindle output that, that relay right here and uh, I'll turn this, the vacuum on it's kind of loud so that's the vacuum but the problem is I put my finger on this nozzle. I feel a little bit of vacuum. A little bit. But if I pinch this off, you can see that the vacuum raises much higher. So, so I, have some I have a serious vacuum leak in this thing. And that's going to prevent me from uh, prevent this thing from working. So what I need to work on now is just get the vacuum leak out of here. It shouldn't be that hard to do. Not that I'm getting some spin-off. I put a, a small video camera under there. And I'm getting some spin-off technologies because I liked the way that first scene looks, the opening scene, where this thing is just kind of gliding or gliding across this path like that. And that was pretty impressive. So what I may do is uh, do some spin-off work, get that little video camera and put it on this this axis here which rotates around and then I could like get that thing to like to do some flying shots and all this in the sub-miniature world you know that's gonna, that's gonna be pretty interesting I think I'm gonna 
uh, really look into that. Now I wrote some cu custom software in order to control this pick and place machine. I wrote it in Visual Basic 6 and uh, actually it took a little while to write it but it actually does everything I needed to do. It does the hoppers. You probably can't see this right now. I'll do a, probably a, a tutorial on this or whatever just to show you what it does. Anyway, there is a, uh, a, a software that runs this that I had to write. I like to write my, my own software because then, <coughs> excuse me, then I understand how it works. And I mean, you could get somebody else's software, then you'll be, then you get all involved with it, and, and then you find out it can't do exactly the thing that, you know, this one little particular thing that you needed it to do. So I just like to write my own software. I've actually been modifying this software as a, as I've been running the machine to uh, to straighten out a lot of things so it seems to be working great now anyway that's that's where it's at right now and uh, let me go ahead and fix this vacuum problem and I've made a few breakthroughs too because in order to populate I have to make these printed circuit boards and in order to get these things done I also need to put the solder paste on them as well and I wanted to make a stencil and I uh, didn't know how to make a stencil but I worked on that and now I know how to make a stencil and so uh, otherwise that would be too much work to put solder on every one of those uh, pads or whatever so now I know how to make a stencil I'll be cutting the stencil out in the next video and making some printed circuit boards as well and then we're going to populate them we're going to populate them then we're going to cook them, and then we're going to use them. Okay, so, Scientist Raz out, I'll talk to you guys later.